Hello and welcome to Greensburg, Kansas for the Kiowa County Mavericks final home game of their 2011 season against the Hodgman County Longhorns. It is the last home game of the season here for the, Ma for the Mavericks, uh, but we're also proud to say it is our first inaugural live broadcast for the Kiowa County Media Center. So we're excited to be here and bring you this game here tonight. Uh, I am joined tonight by our special guest commentator, Travis Barnes. Thank you, thank you. I'm filling in for Tony Factor this evening, so hopefully I won't embarrass myself too much. No, we'll have a contest. Whoever embarrasses themselves more owes the other one a Coke. I think I can, I think we'll, I can we'll, meet we'll that. We'll let the guys in the trailer decide who, who wins this bet. So, uh, again, just glad to have you here joining us here tonight. Uh, and please feel free to pass along the, the website or the, the information for this live broadcast to your friends. If you have any family from out of town who weren't able to make this game, uh, please let them know. Uh, again, our website, if you're watching this, you should know it, but it's live.kbukasmedia.org. I like the pink leggings the guys are wearing tonight for, for breast cancer. I think that's a nice touch. It goes really well with the burnt orange. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know if aesthetically it does, but all it's a, it's a great show of support for, for a worthy, worthy cause. One thing is, I don't think we'll have any trouble telling a Maverick uh, player from a Hodgman County player. That is most definitely true. Well, we're getting ready to start the game here. Tyree will be doing the kicking for the Mavericks. And that is number five, Jared Borger, who will be doing the receiving. And deep kick for the Mavericks, pretty good one. Borger feels it at about the five, he brings it out. Moving to his right, but he's wrapped up quickly by the Mavericks. And it looks like the the Longhorns will start the game at their own 19. Pretty decent coverage for the Mavericks on that play. They really got downfield really well and broke through the blocks. Yeah, and that's actually a little change of pace for the Mavericks. A lot of times this season they have favored shorter, more onside style kicks, but elected to kick it deep that time and worked out well for them. Looks like that number 10, Austin Fannin steals quarterbacking. And first snap of the game. Fumble. That is a fumble. And that is recovered by the Mavericks. So great start for the Mavericks tonight. Lyman Moorhead, nice, nice recovery. He really got in there and got on that ball. Uh, move the ball, the fumble moved the ball up a little bit. Uh, the Mavericks will start their first position of the game just inside the 20. So they're in good shape here. Hopefully get out to an early lead. Trevor Powell uh, is quarterbacking for the Mavericks. He's going to keep it, running up the middle. He gets inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. Again, Powell is quarterbacking for the Mavericks because there's typical starting quarterback. Ross Benford was unfortunately injured last game last week uh, with a broken ankle. He'll be out for the rest of the season. It's a big loss for the Mavericks, big loss. But I think Trevor Powell, he'll, he'll, have, uh, he'll have his work cut out for him tonight, but I think he'll do pretty decent. No, he's young. He's a sophomore. But, uh, again, I think he, he'll adjust quickly to his new task and hopefully lead the Mavericks offense very effectively tonight. Takes the snap. Hands off to Keenan Behe, and Behe gets some really good yardage. He'll take it down to about the 11, 12-yard line. Seven. Thank you. Yeah, seven-yard line. And, that's enough for and, I, and I'm quickly behind on our bet tonight. <laughs> it's, uh, Coke was, has never tasted this sweet. I should have made it something different because I don't like Coke. <laughs> Which I guess that makes it okay if I'm going to lose the bet since I won't have to drink it. Mm. So first and goal for the Mavericks from the seven-yard line. Powell takes a snap. Looks like he's going to keep it up the middle. He's got a room, and he's nice. going to get in the end zone untouched. Nice run, nice run. Major hole. The line did a really good job breaking open that hole, and Trevor just shot right through the middle and right into the end zone. Yep, so really great start for the Mavericks here with a quick fumble recovery, turnover, first forced a turnover, and we're able to convert that into six points with just three plays. It's a good start for the Mavericks tonight. Really good start. It's good to get on the board early. And on the conversion, Powell takes a snap. He hands off to Behe, and he 
It, Matt, it really looks like the, the Mavericks offensive line is just having their way with the defensive line of... Uh, I'll tell you, B, he did a, a nice little Darren Sproles impression there, I think. <laughs> Quick feet. I, I don't know if I necessarily go that far, but, you know, wow. he's, he's, got, he's young yet. He, he, can, he can work on it. He yeah. can make it happen. So with that successful conversion, the Mavericks jump out to a quick 8-0 lead. Uh, and that's their first points in, with less than a minute left expired here in the game. So no, nothing beats a quick score. Except for two quick scores. Or three or four or five. But there's only so much you could get done in one minute of a football game. True, true. I think it's the I think it's the pink stockings. I think that's the magic tonight. I will not disagree with you. Power of pink. And Tyree will kick off again, just like he did to start the game. And Borger receives the kick at the five yard line. Brings it out to the left side. He's got some room. Uh, better return this time for the for the Longhorns. Borger brings it out to about the 28-yard line. Yeah, coverage wasn't quite as good as the last time. Now Borger just kind of received that kick, started running straight ahead, yeah. and got quite a few yards behind him before he was brought down. Van Steel takes a snap. He's going to keep it. Runs up the middle, but not a lot of room. He only gets up to about the 30-yard line, gain of two. Yeah, they, they really dived in on that play. There, there wasn't very much of a gap at all for him to go through. So, uh, Looks like the officials are going to give a generous spot by my eye. They're marking that closer to the 31, so it'll be second and seven. Borger takes a snap. The handoff is two. Let's see if I can see the bottom of the pile. You see what... 21, Tanner Keir was the carry. Uh, he got quite a few yards up to the to the Longhorn 36 yard line, will be third and a short two. Borger takes a snap. He's running to his right. He's going to keep it. Oh, nice Not a coverage. lot of room nice there, and he's nice going to be yeah. He's going to be stopped for no gain. Well done. Well done. So that'll be fourth and two from the 36. We'll see what the Longhorns like to do. If they'll play it safe and punt it away, or try to gain a couple yards for a first down. It's a man football. You go for it. Usually that's the case, but this is early. Uh, they're, they're on their own side of the field, so it looks like they will elect to punt it away. At least that's what the, they want the Mavericks to believe. Ooh. Punt is away. Powell is set to receive it, but he's going to let it drop. It goes out Short of bounds punt. at about the 22-yard line of the Mavericks. So not a bad punt. No, oh, not bad. It looks like it went off the side of his foot a little bit and kind of angled out, ducked out of the... On out True, but east, you know, east. still a decently long field for the Mavericks. But their their first uh, first drive really, uh, they didn't have any trouble moving the ball. We'll see if they can keep up the success here. Powell lines up the shotgun. He keeps it up the middle. Not a lot of room there for him, and he looks like he's probably going to lose a yard on that carry. Yeah, the hole closed up really, really quick on them, and you know, Powell tried to get back to the to the right hand side, and, and he did get back to the original line of scrimmage, but nothing else. That'll be ring up second and ten from the twenty-two. Powell lines up in the shotgun, takes the snap. He hands off to Behe, but not much room for Behe on that play, play. He'll gain maybe two yards out to the 20, almost the 24. It'll be third and eight. Eight. 
So third and eight for the Mavericks. See if they can dig into their long yardage playbook and get this first down. Oh, uh, that's, that's a movement there. Looks like Lyman was offside. Yeah, I do believe that will False make start. this first down even a little harder to get than it already was for the Mavericks. False start is indeed the case, so our illustrious guest commentator called it right. You're still ahead on the bet. I hate, you know, I like watching football. See, that's where you and I differ. I'm, I'm a baseball guy myself, so. Oh, I like baseball too. That's true. I, I'm, I'm not much of a football game. <laughs> so we've got third and 13. Ooh. Looks like Powell's trying to pass it. He's trying to get Craig oh, McDonald. Craig McDonald was the intended receiver, but just overthrown a tad. That'll bring up fourth down. So fourth and 13, deep in their own territory. What would you what's your call here? You go for it. You go for it. No, I, I, would, I would punt. I would, I would punt okay. in this situation. I'm saying I, I'm it's probably the prudent decision. You don't want to give the ball over at their own. You're just taking pity on me there with that other call and trying to even up the score on this, this wager. Ooh. Looks like the Hodgman County gentleman almost almost got a hand on it. Borger takes the punt. He gets out to about the 30, 37 of the Longhorns. So the Longhorns will have pretty good field position starting from near midfield. Yeah, Artery really wrapped him up pretty good. So after the quick three and out, the Longhorns will take over and try to even the score. Borger takes the snap. He's keeping rolling out to his right. He's gonna try throwing it. That is complete to Austin Fannensteel. So nice long gain for the Longhorns there. Uh, that completion brings it inside the Maverick 20 to the 18. Yeah, Fannin still showed some really good com uh, concentration on that catch there with the, the Maverick defender right in his face. Really nice hands. Borger behind center, takes the snap. It's a handoff to number three, Landon Henning. Henning gets the ball to the 14 yard line. That's a gain of about three, bring up second and seven. Bring up second down and seven for the Longhorns. Let's see if the Mavericks can. Borger behind hand. center. Handoff that time is to number two, Alex Crager. Oh, oh. ball is loose. But looks like they ruled him down before uh, the football came out. So he was down before he lost control of the ball there, but still a good defensive play for the Mavericks. That's no gain on the play. So it'll be third and seven from the 14 yard line. Borger takes the snap. Handoff is to Krager. Yeah, but Krager, nothing doing for him. Yeah, it looks like Rustin really, really punched through there and got, got good penetration in the backfield. Yeah, after giving up that long pass play, the Maverick defense has really uh, kind of buckled down and stopped him dead. Here at fourth and seven, but deep in the Maverick territory, they will be going for it here. Borger, he's going to be passing it. Oh, oh, oh. Didn't have anyone open, and he is going to be sacked. Nice defensive stand. So, that, yep, it was resting again. Yeah, really. Was actually, just good defense all around. The line, defensive line got some penetration, pressured Borger before he had a chance to find an open receiver, and were able to contain him before he was able to, uh, to find any open ground. So that's a turnover on down. So good job by the Mavericks defense, and they'll try to move the ball down the field, starting from their own – Oh, what do you call that? 16 yard line, 17 yard line? Yeah, 16 and a half. 16 and a half. Uh, 16 and two thirds. Yeah, so 16 and two thirds. That's one for me. There you go. The back half is 16 and a half. Powell from the shotgun. He's going to keep it, running to his right. Not much room for him. He's going to get out to the 19 yard line. That's a gain of just two. 
after that first series, the uh, the Longhorn defense has been doing a pretty good job of containing the run these last couple couple series. Yeah, they've really been been matching up really well with the, the Mavericks offensive line. It looks like they're not uh, they're not really pushing too deep into the backfield, but they're they're also not giving up any ground at all. Yeah, it's tough to move the field to move the ball down the field if you're only getting two or three yards at a time, which is generally what the Mavericks have been able to do these last couple of plays. But it's an early game yet. Powell takes a snap. Oh, he hands off to Behe, who is immediately met by a wall of Longhorns. Yeah, that's going to be a loss of yardage. They they really had that play called. They, they yeah, there was they saw it coming a mile away. I see. Last time you said that the the Longhorns didn't weren't getting a lot of penetration, but that time they definitely did. Uh, call that a loss of two. It'll be third and ten from the 17 yard line of the Mavericks. See if Trevor airs it out again here. Powell takes a snap, but it looks like he will be throwing it. Off to the left side. Oh, he's got blockers out in front of him. That is nice. Jordan Wyrick on the reception. He had quite a bit of open, open field in front of him. Wyrick brings it out to about the 31 yard line. That's good for a first down. Yeah, Matt, he uh, really had good blockers set up there. It was a really, really well designed play. We call that a screen, kind of almost. Yeah, it would. It would. Just a quick pass to the outside, get yeah. some open field, and worked well that time. Move the chains. So Mavericks get a first down from their own 31-yard line. Powell's going to keep it, running up to his oh, he's right. Got, he's, he's got, got a, a lot guy. of open field in front of him. Is They're anyone going to be able to catch him? him? No, they won't. Well Long done. touchdown run for Powell. I'll tell you what, Trevor Powell, he's really got some wheels behind him. Once he gets open field, it's, there's nobody going to be able to catch up with him. I'll tell you, just you know, right when he got about 10 yards downfield, I thought there was a chance for some Longhorn players to catch him. But uh, once he had that open field, he just increased the water, little gap there was. They, they didn't have a chance. You're right. So great run by Powell, great blocking by the line, and Mavericks extend their lead. Powell takes a snap. He's running to his left. He's going to keep it. Yeah. yeah, he just completely outran the coverage there. Completely. A well designed play and another two point conversion where the Mavericks get in the end zone without being touched. So, here, just inside of four minutes left to go in the first quarter, the Mavericks have a 16 0 lead over the Hodgman County Longhorns. Yeah, Matt, this, this game is really coming along for the Mavericks. I think they, they're really showing that they can move the ball against this, this uh, Longhorn defense and yeah. put points up on the board. Defense has been doing very well, aside from that one big pass play on that last series. Uh, really been doing a really good job of containing Hodgman County's running game. Uh, and uh, a little inconsistent some from time to time on the, the offensive side of the ball, but in the end of the day, or the end of the first eight minutes of the game at least, uh, they've got two touchdowns and none for Hodgman County, so good start for the Mavericks. Let's see if they, uh, they continue to do well on their kickoff coverage. Yeah, the first two kickoffs for the Mavericks were, were nice and deep. And if they stay true to form here, uh, Tyree will be doing the kicking. And he will again, and he'll be kicking off to Jared Borger for the Longhorns. Another deep kick. Borger receives it about the five again. He runs forward up the middle. Not much room for him that time. Yeah, man, it looked like Coulter Brown got a hand on him there and, and didn't completely wrap up, but got, you know stopped him enough that he got off balance and got knocked down. Yep, so the Longhorns will start from their own 24 and try to put a dent in this early Maverick lead. Borger lines up behind center. He's going to try to keep it, but he I'll has nothing going. 
He's going to lose a yard or two on that one. Rustin Artery, the, the, he's he is just having his way with that, that Longhorn offensive lineman. Every play, he's consistently been pushing through and getting to the quarterback or getting into the backfield. Yeah, just as soon as, soon as Borger tried moving forward, he was met and didn't have a chance to get any, get any yardage. That's a loss of one. Bring up second and 11 for the Longhorns. Borger takes a snap. He pitches back. That is number three, I believe, Landon Henning. Uh, Landon hitting on the carry. He gets a few yards, but not a lot. They're going to mark that play down at about the 28-yard line. It'll be third and six. Longhorns line up in a spread shotgun formation this time. We'll see what they do in this formation. Borger will be passing it. Throws to his right. Oh, threw behind his receiver. Yep, that was intended for number two, Alex Krager. Uh, but uh, again, just didn't quite lead the receiver enough, and that's incomplete. Bring up fourth and six for the Longhorns. Yeah, Longhorns did a pretty decent job there on pass, you know, pass protection, giving him time to actually get the ball down the field. He didn't look too pressured at all. No, and Borger looks like he's got a good arm on him. Uh, a couple passes so far. Uh, first was actually really well thrown right to the receiver. That one had good speed on it, just a little off, off the mark. Pyle signals for the fair catch, which he'll catch that at the 23-yard line where the Mavericks will take over. Apologize to our friends from Hodgem County. That was Fanning Steel quarterbacking on that last play for the Longhorns. So it's again, it looks like I'm early, an early deficit on a, my little wager here with my partner. There's still a lot of game to be played. Okay, we've got a timeout on the field. Yeah, welcome back to the game after that quick timeout. Uh, Mavericks have the ball first and 10 from their own 23. Powell takes a snap. He's going to keep it up the middle. He, uh, I'll tell you, that was a pretty good effort by Powell. He didn't have a lot of room, but he stayed stayed with it and moved the ball forward when there wasn't much room. Yeah, but he only gained about two yards on that play. They, they really did do some good. So with that two-yard gain, that brings the Mavericks up to the 25-yard line. We'll be second and eight. Powell takes a snap. He keeps it running to his left. And he gets past a tackler, and he's going to pick up enough yardage for a first down. Gets up to about the 38-yard line of the Mavericks, where the Mavericks will have a fresh set of downs. Yeah, that was a really nice run by Trevor Powell. He, he, once he saw that he had an open lane on the outside, he just bumped right out and moved the chains, which is... Yeah, just all, it looked like the there was a Longhorn defender there, a chance to bring him down before he got outside, but... Powell was able to turn that corner and have open field in front of him and make a nice long gain. First and 10 for the Mavericks near midfield. Powell takes a snap. Looks like he's going to keep it running up the middle. He gains a couple up to midfield. Be second and eight from the 40. And tell you, from this range of the field, we should. I, I, this is one of the rare times where I should be able to spot the ball about where it is because it's directly in front of me, the midfield. Mid I'm, I'm notoriously bad. I'm five or ten yards off if you get near an end zone. But near midfield, I'm okay. You know they have this neat little cheat thing, Matt? It's called numbers. They're actually painted on the field for you. So. I know. That makes it all the more sad that I can't get it right. I, I, well, I'm there. They, I can see them. I can read them just fine. Just... They don't mean anything to me. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. Uh, with your help, I might get there. 
Powell t- keeps the snap again. Uh, yet again, not a lot of room for him. Yeah, they're really the Longhorns are really really closing down the interior of the, of the field there for the against the yeah. Mavericks. Mavericks not having a lot of success when they try to go up the middle of the field. They're having most of their success when they try to put it out the outside. That's a gain of about three for Powell on that carry. It'll be third and five from the Longhorn 37. Powell takes a snap. He hands off to Behe. He tries to run to the outside, but he's not able to turn that corner. And that's only about a two yard gain. Looks like there's an injured Maverick on the field there. Slow getting up, number 44. Yeah. Coulter Brown, number 44, slow to get up, but he is up now, so hopefully he's okay. That will be the final play of the first quarter. So we'll start the second quarter with the Mavericks bringing to a 16 nothing lead and facing a fourth and short. Uh, welcome back to the start of the second quarter here in this game. We'd like to send it down to Katie Large for a sideline report. With the loss of their quarterback in last week's game against Maxwell, the Mavericks are showing they aren't missing a beat. They're coming out firing on all pistons tonight, gaining a fumble, getting a fumble recovery early in the first quarter and running it in for a touchdown. The score is now 16 to nothing, showing the Longhorns that we are ready for a fight tonight. Back to you guys. First down, uh, he gets the ball down to the 25 yard line of the Longhorns. So it'll be first and 10 from the 25. Good start to the second quarter. Very good start. It's nice to see a, nice to see a fourth down conversion there. The Mavericks are having really good luck bumping to the outside. I think I think Trevor Powell's speed is just overmatching the Hodgman County Longhorns. Powell keeps it. He's going to cut back up the middle. He's got open field. Uh, that's a touchdown, but we have a flag down at about the 15-yard line. Uh, my guess is that's probably not going to be good news for the Mavericks. Yeah, I think it might have been holding on the on the Mavericks. Officials deciding what they're wanting to do here. And that is an illegal block against the Mavericks, so that play unfortunately is coming back. Which is really too bad. They, Trevor Powell saw that hole wide open and cut back and really, really hit hard. Yeah, the, the one bright spot to that penalty is it's a spot foul, so instead of pushing him back way back, uh, they'll actually only end up starting one yard behind where they started the last play since the penalty occurred downfield. Yeah, they really they really lucked out with that play. As far as penalties goes, that's, that's about the best situation you can so imagine. Yep, first and 11 for the Mavericks from the Longhorn 26. See if they can repeat that without the penalty. Well, they tried to. Powell kept the ball up the middle again, but not nearly as much room that time. Uh, it's going to be n- no gain. Yeah, the Longhorn uh, defensive line really got some good penetration there. So Mavericks will have second down and 11 from the Longhorn 26. See what play the coaching staff of the Mavericks call here. Powell on the shotgun, Tyree in motion. Powell's gonna keep it, looks like he's gonna try to throw. Not much open for him. He throws it up way high. Oh, oh. That was Keenan Behe open near the end zone. Uh, actually, a pretty good pass, all things considered, from Powell. Behe, yeah, he unfortunately, did not was not able to come down with it. You really got to catch that. He was hit him in his hands. Yeah, and, and you know, in Behe's defense, that was more like catching a punt than catching a pass. But again, 
Powell did a great job just getting that away under the pressure he was in. He did a good job avoiding the, the pass rush of the Longhorns uh, to the outside and just buying himself enough time to make that throw. And in BD's defense, the defender did happen to bump into him a little bit as, he, as the ball is coming in. But it will be third and 11 for the Mavericks. Powell's going to keep it, run to his right. Not much room for him, unfortunately. And he's only able to bring it up to about the 23-yard line. And bring up fourth and a long eight. So go for it. Yeah, the to. Maverick defense has been really, really holding up against the Longhorn, so I, I would go for it. I would definitely go for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there no sense punting this close, and if you don't have a kicker that can make a decently long field goal, it's about your only choice. Oh, Unfortunately, dude. that's a pick. Powell is able to bring down the intercepting receiver, but not before the Longhorns return it back to the 28-yard line of the Mavericks. That was number 20, Dakota Coates, with the uh, with the interception there. Powell did a really good job of... of well, Dakota did a good job reading that, that play, just stepped right in front of the pass, and at that point it was just Powell, you know, Powell's the only, only person between him and a touchdown, but Powell was able to save the touchdown. Borger pitches back. That was number two, Alex Krager. Krager brings it out to about the 25 yard line. That's a gain of just over two. Second and about seven. Borger takes a snap, he's gonna keep it. Actually, he's gonna try to pass it. That's a pass complete to Fennensteel. So that that's the first points for the, the Longhorns tonight. Yeah, he really he really led it up there for Fennensteel. And Fennensteel just caught it. Nice, good hands. Easy touchdown. Yep, that was a good, pretty good play all around for the Longhorns. Nice pass by Borger and a nice catch by Fennensteel. So Longhorns get their first points of the night, and they'll try to get within a touchdown here with a two-point conversion. Borger oh, keeps they, it, but he's met quickly by the defensive line of the Mavericks. No good. Yeah, the defensive line really, really bunkered down on that one. Each of them were in their position. There was no gap whatsoever. They were just waiting for him to come through that hole. Yeah, got to actually give a lot of props to the Maverick defensive line tonight. The, uh, the running game for the Longhorns really hasn't been there very much. Uh, what yardage they have gained has been through the air. So we've got 9-13 left to play here in the first half, and it's a 16-6 game in favor of the Mavericks. So yeah, beautiful night. We don't get a lot of beautiful weather days and nights here in Kansas, but I have to classify tonight as one of them. Yeah, it really hasn't. It's starting to cool down a little bit, but not as cold as it was the other night. Yeah, we had our first freeze of the year the, the other night, but I don't think it's gonna do that tonight. I can tell you what, my, my allergies have definitely been bothering me lately. We need that. We need another hard freeze to stop the pollen. Mine, mine started bothering me a few weeks ago, but thankfully last week or so they kind of died down. So you must be allergic to different stuff than you are. We're ready to kick off here. Behe and Powell will be doing the receiving for the Mavericks. Short kick on the ground for the Longhorns. Hmm. Powell gets it after it gets by Behe. Powell still on his feet. He's finally going to be brought down at about the 25-yard line. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty lucky. The ball bounced off Behe right into Powell's arm. Tell you, that's, uh, could have been dangerous. Uh, a, a novel but effective kick nonetheless for the Longhorns. That was just a ground ball, uh, just a deep onside kick, I guess, where yeah. took a lot of weird bounces and was difficult, difficult for the Mavericks to come up with it. But in the end, Powell was able to grab it and got it back out to the 25. Okay. 
Powell takes a snap. He's going to keep it, running up the middle. Some good yardage for him there. He gets out to about the 31. That's a gain of six. Matt, I think you need to go down there and get you one of those pink pom-poms. That'd, that'd look really nice on your desk. If I wasn't so busy here, I would take you right up on that. Plus, I feel kind of guilty about stealing one from a cheerleader. I don't know. Oh, I think if you asked nicely, they, they took you up. Yeah. Got a point there. So second and about four for the Mavericks. Powell takes a snap. He hands off to Behe. Behe has some room. Nice blocking ahead. Good Keeping blocking, and moving. Behe's able to take advantage of those holes. Yeah, that was a really, really well-designed play. The offensive line just pretty much pushed the defenders back. Behe kept his legs moving and got a first down. Behe was able to get that past midfield out to the Longhorn 37 where the Mavericks will have a fresh set of downs. Powell in the shotgun, takes a snap. Another handoff to Behe, he's up the middle and he's got more room and he gets by everybody. Oh. but is not quite able to get in the end zone. He is tripped up at the one by number 44, Zach Blurton. Nice play by Blurt Burton to save a touchdown there. I'll tell you what, B, he just, he, he's such small in stature, he just pretty high, you know, hid behind the offensive line the whole time. And then when he broke free, his legs just. Yep, so great run uh, by Behe there. Uh, they mark him down at the two yard line, but still good shape for the Mavericks where they'll have first and goal with just two yards to punch it in. I'd like to see him hand off to Behe again just so he can finish what he started. It's, it's always good to, to get some completion to that. Yeah, it just I, I, I'd agree with you there. Let's, let's see if they do that. It looks like Powell's going to keep it, and he's going to get in. Walks right on in. Well, sorry, Behe, you did most of the work on that, that uh, drive, but Powell gets the glory. Such is life as a running back. You play for the name on front, not the name on back. Sage, sage words, my friend. So with that touchdown, the Mavericks extend their lead to 22 to six and they'll try to attack on two more. Powell takes a snap, he's gonna run to his left, trying to get the corner, but he's not gonna get there. Yeah, the Longhorns had really good pursuit on that play and just really, Powell had nowhere to go. He just kept running right on out of bounds. Yeah, just kept stringing it out to the left side, trying to find a hole, but one never came. Still, good, good series for the Mavericks. They were able to answer the first score of the Longhorns very quickly and extend their lead back out to 22 to six. You better not do that. You don't have much left up there. I'm So Matt, you're, you're looking forward to basketball season. I am looking forward to basketball season. As you sure, I'm sure you probably have noticed if you've listened to me broadcast many of these games, including tonight, I often have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, I.e. a hard, deep kick along the ground is a squib kick. I just learned that about five minutes ago. So basketball, uh, however, is much more my wheelhouse. I'm not an avid basketball follower, but I used to play it some, and I'm much more comfortable knowing what's what on a basketball court as opposed to a football field. So uh, hopefully uh, you'll be joining us once basketball season starts up, and I'll be able to give you a little bit better commentary as the plays unfold there just for the fact that, again, hopefully I'll have some idea, not a good idea what I'm talking about at that point, but at least some idea as opposed to no idea, which is what you're hearing right now. So that was another effective squib kick. Now that I know that term, I'm going to use it a lot. But the uh, squib kick uh, stayed on the ground quite a bit before the Longhorns picked it up. And by the time they did, they didn't really have much room to run anywhere. Uh, so they'll start at about the 24 yard line. They're on 24. Yeah, it looked like it was the, the ball was almost getting ready to head out of bounds, but it looked like it kind of died there by the side, which is uh, really I, I, fortuitous for the. I, for I the believe that's probably what the Longhorns receiving team was thinking. Just it, you know, odd shaped ball, don't know where it's going to bounce, and it never went out. Went out. What went out? 
man, I am very impressed with Rustin Arter. He just yep. stays in position, wraps up good. Yeah, Borger handed off to Cure on that play, but as my nice commentator to the left of me observed, not much room for Cure there. Uh, maybe half a yard, it'll be second and nine. Yeah, that was a pretty generous spot by the refs there. Ah, uh, forward momentum. If any part of the ball ever got there, that's where they're gonna mark it. Even if that's not where he ended. I do know that at least. <laughs> Borger's gonna pass, oh, he's got Finnenstein, oh, and that nice. is another completion deep for the Longhorns. Beautiful pass, beautiful pass, just floated right into right. Fan and Steel, not Fan and Stein. And again, especially to our friends watching from Hodgman County, uh, I do my best trying to get these names correct, but my best is often not good enough. If you noticed, I just uh, pluralize them all together and say the, the Hodgman County Longhorn receiver or, or yeah. quarterback. Of course, I'm not as experienced at this as you are. Handoff is number two, Alex Krager. But following the trend here in the first half, the running game not doing a lot for the Longhorns. Krager only gets it to the 20, sorry, the 19 yard line of the Mavericks. Be second and eight. Borger lines up behind center. He's going to keep it, roll out to his right, but oh, not much anything there, and he's going to be sacked. That is a big loss for the Longhorns. Push them back to the 25-yard line. We'll bring up third and 14. like Fannin Steele is going to be doing the quarterbacking on this from the shotgun. He is going to be passing it, and he nice has got pass. number two, Alex Krager, wide open in the end zone. That's a touchdown. I'll tell you what, Fannin Steele, he, he had a bullet. He threw that on a rope right at him. Tell you, Fannin Steele's been, too, been pretty, doing pretty well in the receiving end of the ball, but he, he's showing he can throw it there too. So passing game really working well for the Longhorns. I guess if you can't run it, but you can pass it. You pass it. You do what works. So Longhorns line up for the two-point conversion. Fan Steele will be quarterbacking again, and he'll be throwing again. But he gets away from pressure. Well, didn't make it in. But did not make it in. Yeah, the Mavericks had really good pen penetration. Yeah, Fan Steele looked, got ready to throw, and Lyman was right there in his face. Uh, good, good pressure from the D-line of the Mavericks. Uh, but got to give credit to, to Fannin Steele. He, he tried to make something out of nothing there and almost made it in on the scramble, but Mavericks were able to close on him and keep him out. So 22 to 12, Mavericks have a 10 point lead. So here with just under six minutes left to go in the first half, Kiowa County Mavericks have a 22-12 lead over the Hodgman County Longhorns and will be receiving the kickoff. It'll be Trevor Powell and Keenan Behe deep for the Mavericks. Looks like Jordan Wyrick is laying down here on the Mavericks sideline, Matt. Uh, uh, looks like EMS is calling, calling for the stretcher. Never like to see that. No, that is not good at all. Short kick. <laughs> Lyman Moorhead picked that kick up and powered his way forward. Good field position for the Mavericks here. But uh, our hearts and prayers are with... with 
Wyrick down on the on the sideline here. Yeah, that's got to give your best wishes to Wyrick as they're actually bringing out a stretcher for him. So let's hope that it's not as serious as it may seem and he'll bounce back sooner rather than later. Powell in the shotgun. Hands off to Behe up the middle. He's got a little room. He keeps moving forward, brings some of the pile with him, and he brings it out to about the 37-yard line of the Longhorns. That's about a eight, nine-yard gain. Yeah, he just tucked right in behind Lyman and ran, ran downfield. Looked like the ball came out too, but it looks he, the refs ruled him down by contact, so there was no fumble on the play. End result is a nice gain. And Mavericks have a short second one here to try and keep the chains moving. Powell takes a snap, but it gets by him. He's able to recover it, but not before. That's a big loss for the Mavericks. That'll back them up to the 30 yard line where it'll be third and long. Yeah, the snap just just looked like it got away from the center. Went right over, right over Trevor's head. So with that large large loss, it'll be third and about 14 yards to go. So again, the Mavericks have to dig deep and try to find a long gaining play to get a first down. Tyree in motion, fake the handoff to him. They're good. Powell looks like he's going to try to pass. It's deep. That Picks is off another again. interception. That is Borger who picked that ball off with a good catch. Trevor. <laughs> and Powell gets a little revenge with a hard hit to bring down Borger, but that's a, well, we have a penalty flag on the field. And that's going to be an illegal block against the Longhorns. So that'll back them up a little bit and force them back on their own side of the field. So it's a pretty good, pretty good uh, catch on that interception by Borger. Uh, a little bit of acrobatics there. Yeah, he really, he really saw that ball coming in, jumped up and grabbed it. That pass was intended for number two, Keenan Behe, by the way. But just didn't quite get to Behe, and Borger was able to pick it off. So Longhorns will start this drive at their own 33, and they will do their best to try and make it a pretty close game as we get close to halftime here with four minutes left to play in the first half. Borger will be quarterbacking this time for the Longhorns. He'll line up behind center. Takes a snap, and he loses the snap. We'll see who came up with it. Looks like he got back on top of it. And it looks like he recovered his own fumble, but. Well, that's a one yard fumble recovery. No, we'll he dropped it, he dropped it a little bit forward, so. Second and nine. Borger takes the snap, trying to run it up the middle, but once again, not much room for him. Yeah, the Longhorn, the Longhorn running game was really being shut down by the Mavericks tonight. Yep. Be only one more yard on that play, be third and eight from the 35-yard line of the Longhorns, and you're absolutely right there, Travis. Um, Longhorns have been able to do some damage here, but it's all been over the air, not much on the ground. Looks like Fannin back in quarterback, Fannin too. Steel, he's going to be passing it. Not much there for him. He's going to scramble forward. And he gets around a Maverick defender to gain some nice yardage. He's able to get it inside Maverick territory down to the 30-yard line. That's a nice long gain, more than enough for a first down. Like Mavericks had a good penetration there, good coverage, no one open, but uh, Fannin Steele was able to scramble, find some gaps, and gain some good yards. Yeah, he definitely did that all with his legs there, Matt. Yeah. 
as opposed to his elbows. Borders back to the <laughs> quarterbacking. Uh, hands it off uh, to, that is number three, Landon Henning. And just as when we were saying that there wasn't much going for the running game of the Longhorns, they just had to go and prove us wrong. So we're both wrong there. Oh, no. No, no, no change on the status of our little wager. Fair enough. Looks like they're taking Jordan off the field now on the stretcher. Uh, let's hope he bounces back. There, it's never a happy sight to see is when a player has to uh, leave on the stretcher. That's Jordan Weirich for the Mavericks. So best wishes to Jordan and all his family. Hope, hopefully be back at school here pretty soon. Borger going to roll out to his right, and he's got plenty of room for the corner. So that is good on the two-point conversion, and we have ourselves a two-point ball game. Yeah, he really set that play up with a decent fake. Yep, fake the handoff to go into the left. He went to, he, that's a, what do you call that, a bootleg? No. Yes. Yep. Ha. So bootleg, see, I guess I do know something. Played a little, played a little bit of Madden back in my day. Ah, uh, those were the days. Yes. Good old Super Nintendo. Show, show my uh, age, Madden 93, I believe it was. Yes, yes. Countless hours. But uh, it, 2.43 left to play here in the first half. Uh, a couple quick scores by the Longhorns, and they're right back in this game. Uh, they trail the Mavericks by only two points. Yeah, Matt, they have been – I mean, the Longhorns and the Mavericks look like they are pretty evenly matched here. Uh, yeah, they're they're similar in a lot of ways, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's possibly. You know, they both have horns and – Nearly synonymous. Yeah, pretty much. So we're having I'm, – I'm having trouble with our opponents sometimes here in that Last week we had the Mustangs of Maxville, and again you both have kind of Old West animals starting with them. I was always getting mixed up. I'm surprised I'm not doing it tonight with Longhorns and Mavericks being just very, very similar mascots in and of themselves. Got another squib kick. And that is fallen Lyman. on by Lyman, Lyman Moorhead. Uh, probably did a smart thing there and just covered the ball and give the Maverick offense a chance to move it down and try to extend their lead here with just 2.43 left to play in the first half. Yeah, I'd really like to see the Mavericks drive down the field here with the time that they have left just to, just to give them that cushion going into halftime. Well, and it's just, again, you know, try to get a little momentum back. They had a, a you know, nice 16-point lead until uh, just recently and be good to get a little bit of breathing room and just a little bit of morale boost heading into the second half. Absolutely. See if they're able to do that. Powell takes a snap, hands off to number 44, Coulter Brown. Not looks a lot like of there's room. a flag on the play. We'll see what that flag is. And unfortunately, we have another Maverick down. That is Coulter Brown, the ball carrier. Word from our production show, we're going to take a break. So we're going to take a break here for this injury timeout. Look forward to you to join us when play resumes. That's a good sight to see after that injury timeout. Coulter Brown was able to leave the field under his own power and is walking fairly normally, so hopefully we'll see him back again tonight. Looks like there's a holding call too, Matt, so that's why they, they moved the ball back here. Yeah, so not the best to start for this drive for the Mavericks. They'll have first and about 20 to go from their own 11 yard line. Powell fakes a pass, has a little bit of room, brings it out to about the 17-yard line. It's a gain of about seven. Bring up second in just about 13. Clock's ticking down. We have just over two minutes left to play in the first half. Uh, 
Powell takes the snap. He's going to keep it, running around to his right side, but not a lot of room. That looks like actually that's going to be no gain. He's only able to get out to the 17-yard line where that play started from. Yeah, the Longhorns really snuffed that play out to, from the beginning there. They were, they were right in the gap when he, when he tried to go through. There will be a timeout on the play. Looks like the Longhorns are going to try to get the ball back with some time on the clock and maybe even go into halftime with the lead. So uh, see if the Mavericks are able to put a dash on those plans and pick up a first down on third and long. He's hit, but not able to find the receiver. Yeah, that play was really that is, covered. Yep, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, good. I was uh, going to say the pass was intended for Trevor Tyree. Yeah, Trevor was really covered on that play. He had two, ma two Longhorn defenders on both sides of him. Yep, throwing, it, throwing into double coverage, not successful for the Mavericks, and looks like they'll be forced to punt here on fourth and 13. Looks like Powell will be doing the punting for the Mavericks. And Borger looks to be deep for the Longhorns. Oh, And that nice is block, block punt. So good penetration for the Longhorns special teams, and they're going to be in great shape to take the lead here late in the first half. Looks like Fannin still got a really, really good hand on that. As he came through, he textbook laid out, got it. So with just under a minute and a half left to play in the first half, the Longhorns will be first and goal from about the four yard line. See if the uh, Maverick defense can keep the lead here. No, that's a touchdown for the, for the Longhorns. That's Alex Krieger, number two, getting the honors. That's a really bad turn of events for the Mavericks. Tell you, that's, you know, not how you really like to end a half. Kind of a big momentum shift here late in the favor of the Longhorns. Uh, so instead of going into the halftime with a lead, it looks like the Mavericks may very well go in behind unless they're able to, to score quick once they get the ball back. Oh, Borger loses the snap. And he is forced out of bounds. That is no good on the conversion. You know, with a minute 24 left on the clock, Matt, I, I really think the Mavericks have a chance to go down the field here, especially if they get, you know, if the, if the Longhorns continue to do scrib kicks and not kick it deep, you know, give the Mavericks good field position after this after this kickoff. Yeah, the Mavericks themselves have had some success with a couple big plays, so definitely you can't rule them out for a score. Just uh, they'll do their best and try to get this lead back uh, as we approach halftime. So the Longhorns will be kicking off with 124 off to play in the first half. Powell and Behe will be deep to receive for the Mavericks, although not many kicks have been getting back to them. So we'll see, see how the Longhorns collect a kick here with the lead. Be another squib kick. And that is fielded by Behe. And he's able to bring that ball back out past the 30 uh, to about the 33. Yeah, I'd like to see, Matt, I'd like to see the Mavericks run a couple plays outside here and let, let Powell, you know, move the ball down the field with his legs and really get, really uh, get that's, to the edge. That is where the Mavericks have had most of their success tonight is around outside corners. Uh, so let's see if... Yeah, the, and again, the other advantage of that is get the ball out, out of bounds. The, the clock stops. It gives you a little more time. Hand off to Behe. He runs up the middle to the right. And that works as well. That's a nice gain for Behe. He brings it out to the 31-yard line of the Longhorns. So that's a nice first play on 
Very nice. Very nice. Didn't take much time off the clock. Move the chains. But the put clock will start here to punch once in and the, take the lead. Yeah. So 111 left to play here in the first half, and Mavericks have the ball inside Longhorn territory. Powell takes a snap, hand off to Behe again, uh, but not much room for Behe that time. He only gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and the Mavericks will take a timeout, stop the clock. Welcome back here to Greensburg. Mavericks have second and 10 with just under a minute left to go. Handoff is to Behe, he has some room ahead of him. Running up the middle, however, that's gonna run some time off the clock. Yeah, man, it really is. I really would have liked to see him get to the to the sideline there and stop the clock. It's, so yeah, that was a nice gain, but uh, time's ticking down. 40 seconds left to play in the first half. Again, Mavericks are trying to regain the lead. They're down 22-26. Yeah, yeah there was no blocking whatsoever on that. Lyman really got pushed back there. And they were up into to Trevor before he even had a chance to do anything with it. So with that, that play, the Mavericks will take another timeout with 27 seconds left to play. Well, welcome back here with 27 seconds left to play in the first half. Uh, Mavericks have fourth and about four, and they're going to be going for it. And that is an incomplete pass intended for Trevor Tyree. Yeah, it looked like they tried to set up the screen, play, the screen pass there, Matt, but Trevor's pass was just not where it needed to be and threw behind his receiver. Yeah, so... Looks like that momentum the Mavericks were searching for to head into the locker room won't quite be there. Uh, 23.6 seconds left to play here in the first half, and the Longhorns will take over at the or their own 25-yard line. And they've had success throwing the ball, so they're you, they they have a shot yeah. of maybe extending their lead here. I look to I look for them to go deeper on this play, Matt. And Fannin Steele is lining up. Oh, looks like we had false start. Yep. See if Travis is correct on his call, and he is. That is false start. But in this situation, five yards probably not going to make a big difference one way or the other. No, not in this so case. It's you know, 23 seconds left to play. It's going to be one big play, and there's not much difference between a 70-yard play and a 80-yard play. Of course, this is not a 50-yard field, so that doesn't apply. Fannin Steele drops back to pass. Oh, Warhead up, providing pressure. Nice. I'm very that, impressed with the kid's arm. Yep, that is a completion to number five, Jared Borger. So Fannin Steele showed good poise there. It looks like the... Uh, a quick official timeout here, I don't know. I thought it looked like he got out of bounds there on that play, Matt. I thought uh, so I thought as well. The clock should have stopped, but it, it kept running. Yeah, they may they may try to put some time back on the pl clock because I agree. I, I believe that uh, Borger did finish that play out of bounds, so the clock should have stopped. So we'll see if they had some client time back. Time out. Well. Wow. Doesn't look like the officials are going to take any action, so we'll stay at nine seconds left to play here, and the Longhorns take a timeout. 